Erev Tov, Chavarim, my and Steve Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live, and uh, today's breaking news, of course, is being uh, heard all over uh, the news, both in the United States as well as in Israel, and that is Rabbi Yehuda Glick got arrested on the Temple Mount. And it is a conflicting story. Uh, you have the police side of the story on this, and then you have, of course, uh, Rabbi Yehuda Glick, his side of the story. And tonight we're going to look at this also from a biblical perspective, because quite frankly, uh, I know our Christian friends uh, that uh, uh, love Yehuda Glick as well, we forget the biblical narrative behind the story on the Temple Mount, and that's something that we need to take a look at as well. Uh, now we're going to go a little deeper into that side of the story on a different broadcast, but I do want to highlight a little bit tonight. And also we're going to be looking at uh, another very unique story that has popped up, and that is a rabbi in Israel claiming that uh, he is currently in discussions with the Messiah himself. Boy, I tell you what, and, and and what really gets me is that how many Christians are, they just fall for these things, uh, totally forgetting that Jesus Christ truly was the Messiah that fulfilled the prophecies of the Messiah, uh, but, you know, people are just gobbling all this up and going right for it and completely ignoring the scriptures and what is said about uh, the Messiah, and we'll also be looking at Netanyahu, who boasts that he has destroyed free speech in America. This is uh, an article that was written by Juan Cole. We'll be looking at that as well as we go into the biblical aspects of the Temple Mount and what's going on there. Let's first take our story tonight with Rabbi Yehuda Glick, arrested on the Temple Mount, breaking Israel news guiding a U.S. congressman. He was actually with two different U.S. congressmen there on the Temple Mount when this all broke out. Um, we'll be going into that here in just a moment, those congressmen that were there. In fact, one of those congressmen, very outspoken uh, during the impeachment trials of President Trump, Jim Jordan, and of course, Mike Johnson. Jim, of, he's a Republican of Ohio, Mike Johnson, Republican of Louisiana. They, they and their wives uh, were accompanying uh, Yehuda Glick on a private tour of the Temple Mount uh, when allegedly, uh, and like I said, there's two sides of the story. Rabbi Glick was saying that he was walking too slow, according to the policemen that were trying to move him on and uh, then was going to be escorted off the Temple Mount, got arrested in the process. And uh, the police uh, saying in another report that he had violated an area that he was not supposed to go in. Uh, and this is what caused the disturbance. Uh, and since the time of his detainment by police on the Temple Mount, it's been, again, Yehuda Glick has tweeted out that the police had came with a search warrant to his house to search his house later that night at 11.30 p.m., and the police alleged that uh, uh, the former Knesset member, Yehuda Glick, had actually taken investigative materials relating to, the, uh, the, to his original arrest uh, away from the police station, and this is what they were searching his house for. Let's first take a look at the actual video footage of this uh, situation. By the way, this here, this is, uh, and I think this, uh, yeah, this is Avi Ablo, who is also accompanying the tour. We've actually interviewed Avi Ablo here before on Israeli News Live, as well as Rabbi Yehuda Glick as a Knesset member. Uh, both of these uh, men have been on Israeli News Live before. This is them with the congressman here. Uh, that uh, they were there on the Temple Mount earlier today, uh, Con Congressman Jim Jordan and Mike Johnson. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's go right into the video footage here, and we, we can see the video footage here. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about what's being said. You can make out some of the things that are being said by the policeman and, of course, Rabbi Yehuda Glick in Hebrew, but let me just play the, 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 uh, the video that was posted uh, earlier today on social media. Well, one second there. I thought we had uh, sound. Maybe we don't have sound back here. Let's just see. That uh, might be what the problem is right there. Okay, let's try it again. <laughs> All right, let me just stop right there. Uh, Rabbi Glick continues to throw himself to the ground so they can't just take him off the Temple Mount. And of course, his protest is that he's got a right to be there. Uh, 
Uh, he, Glick is not being rude whatsoever in, in this particular thing, but neither is the policeman either. In fact, when they're going to try to force him picking back up, the policeman actually tells him to wait, 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 you know, and then the policeman will ask him over and over and over uh, in Hebrew. He's asking him, please, Yehuda, get up and let's go. But Yehuda is not wanting to get up. Uh, and finally, he'll, they'll end up putting handcuffs on him. Let's back up and see a little bit of this from the beginning. He's asking him to get up. And see, they're, they're, they're going to pit, they're going to force him back up, but the officer there tells him to wait, wait, wait. Okay, that's what he says. Now, I can't quite make out what he's saying with his back to the camera there. Uh, but he's talking to someone on the radio. He actually talks about the Torah also on there uh, as he's uh, saying something about all right, and then he speaks something about the Torah, but I couldn't quite make out everything he was saying at that particular instance. Okay, then he asked him to please get up. So. <laughs> Now he tells them no I guess they're trying to force him up but he tells them no 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 and then he tells him he's talking to him again uh, Yehuda Yehuda and Yehuda says to him please and then of course he's saying to him please the officer saying to Yehuda please get up he needs to take him off the temple mount Constantly saying, get up, get up. He's saying, please get up, all right? All right, come on, get up. He's getting, he's getting a little bit more forceful in his speech, but the wind's blowing in the microphone, so I can't quite make out everything that he's saying on there. He takes it. I think he took his phone from him, and uh, and Yehuda was saying, "Don't, don't do that. Don't do it." Okay. At that point, there, uh, of course, uh, the former Knesset member Yehuda Glick has refused to to cooperate, and this is the point. At that point, there, then he is actually handcuffed, and now is going to be forcefully taken off. Uh, thus far, though, as this is all being recorded, I don't see the police officers being rude to him at all. In fact, the one officer in the blue, he's the one that uh, appears to be the one that I can hear the best. And he's the one that has instructed these other officers not to force him. Don't be pushing on him or anything. He keeps stopping them because he's trying to talk to uh, former Knesset member Yehuda Glick uh, to go to trying to get him to go uh, on his own accord to peacefully leave uh, to leave the area. And I don't know if he was considered to be under arrest at that point or not, uh, but uh, at the, you know, finally gets to the place because uh, Glick is not going to go willingly that he's actually arrested. All right. Now, according to um, on this video right here, this is the actual news uh, video. This is where Rabbi Glick is going to be uh, actually interviewed by uh, I think it's I-24 News there in Israel. I want to want you to listen into this uh, particular. Whoops, sorry, that's actually not the interview. Let's see, that's still the same footage. Here we go, right here, this one here, uh, and he's called on the news activist I-24 Jewish activist Yehuda Glick speaks out on the following. And the Israeli commentator though is pretty blunt in this interview here. Uh, that Yehuda Glick is using this as an opportunity to bring awareness, uh, you, basically using this arrest in order to get national public attention on this. And, uh, and I kind of thought it was kind of interesting because Yehuda does go up there quite often, but when he goes there with the congressman, two congressmen from the United States, it does seem to be an outright attempt for uh, national uh, support. And specifically, as you're going to hear, he's going to call on President Trump
to say something about this. Now, that to me is fairly interesting in itself because you've got right here Jim Jordan. Whoops, sorry about that. You've got Jim Jordan and Mike Johnson, both men, notorious congressmen, very notorious for standing with President Trump, the most fear, fearless uh, uh, congressman for standing for Trump in his impeachment trial, especially, uh, I believe it was Mike Johnson that stood with the, uh, President Trump, the most aggressive there. So I kind of find it ironic that at the time of their visit to Israel on the Temple Mount, that this situation occurs. Uh, so is this a political ploy? Now you got to keep that in mind with the fact that we are also looking at where Netanyahu in this article here by, uh, by Mr. Cole, uh, who is a historian, he is a uh, professor uh, as well, Juan Cole, who wrote the article about Netanyahu boasts that he will destroy free speech in America. And he's actually taking it from this quote that he did here on February the 12th, 2020, where Netanyahu is quoted as saying, it was also not for nothing that the American administration has taken this step together with us in recent years. We have promoted laws in most U.S. states which determine that strong action is to be taken against whoever tries to boycott Israel. Remember when we said to you guys, it's, it's not about anti-Semitism. Boycotting Israel is not anti-Semitism. That's freedom of speech. And universities in the United States is one of the most outspoken advocates for freedom of speech. I may not agree with a lot of things that the universities say or do, but the thing is, they should have a right, especially on university campuses, to, to have free speech. In fact, President Trump was saying when he was speaking at the Right to Life rally, about abortion, that he was there to protect free speech on college campuses. Well, but not when it comes to Israel, though. There's no freedom of speech if you're going to speak against Israel. That's why the scripture says, who is able to make war? I'm talking about the beast system. Who's able to make war with him? So they end up making a covenant with him. So they're trying to get the President of the United States, and now in this case here, Eudiglick's trying to get the President of the United States and you're going to hear this in just a moment for yourself, to come on behalf of Israel to declare the Temple Mount, well, they already declared the Golan Heights, he's declared Jerusalem the capital of Israel, now he needs him to declare the Temple Mount as, uh, well, I guess giving it back over to the Jewish people. But we forget what the scripture says about the Temple Mount. But let's first listen into this. Life in 2014. Well, today police say Glick was at it again moving slowly through the site, ignoring their orders to keep moving, finally arrested by officers, later released after lengthy, lengthy questioning. Well, Yehuda Glick joins us from Jerusalem, but first, Yehuda, I want to read out the police statement on this incident. Quote, police approached the visitor who did not listen to the police orders and continued with his provocative behavior. Police responded by detaining the visitor and removing him from the scene. He was arrested and handcuffed out of the area and questioned we emphasize that over the last few months, the same visitor came to visit the Temple Mount and previously had acted in a provocative manner. Yehuda, how do you respond to that? Are you acting in a provocative manner there at that site, despite police orders? Good evening, Kalev, and uh, get used to the fact when the police say a person was behaving provocatively, it usually means they don't have what to say. If they were blaming me for something specific, they would have said, what did I do? What the provocative thing, so-called, that I did on Temple Mount today was walked the way I do every single week for the past 10 months. Every single Tuesday, I go on the Temple Mount, I walk the exact same way I walked today. The policeman who was walking next to me told me, go faster, go faster, go faster. I was going and he didn't say, he said, I mean, advance, advance, and that's what I was doing. He felt that I, was, I wasn't walking fast enough. I want you to understand, rushing people on Temple Mount happens only if you happen to be a Jew wearing a kippah. The police will never do it to anybody else. There's no reason to do it anywhere else. And the police today had a point of showing and reaching and touching uh, discrimination to its highest level. And I, think, I think it's about time the world comes out clearly, just like President Trump did in the Century Deal, and say enough is enough. 
Temple Mount for all, discrimination out of the game right. on Temple Mount. You, I think that should be the quite obvious thing. And unfortunately, today I was a uh, victim of uh, police terror. Well, one could one could agree. Uh, for example, there could be someone who agrees with you on the larger point that you're trying to make on religious worship on the Temple Mount, but disagree with your tactics. The fact is. Police have authority there. If you say you can defy them in this way, why can't Muslims who are accused of provocative behavior at that same site say, well, we also don't have to listen to the police? No, but that's not what the situation. Today, I was today with today two congressmen on Temple Mount. I warmly respected the policemen. I warmly received and did everything they had told me to do, even though I don't, I don't very much like everything they say, but I do and follow all the orders. But unfortunately, the police on Temple Mount have decided that the Jewish visits, I'm sorry, we're going back to a situation which we, we saw in, the, in 2010, 2011, 2013, that things have changed. The previous uh, chief of, uh, of staff of, of Jerusalem Police Department respected the Jews visiting. The new one today, uh, General yeah. uh, Dorn, is do you, do you, do the you not acknowledge? Back. Do you not acknowledge you are there specifically to challenge that status quo on the no, on the Temple Mount. Not at all. It's not just on thing. You yourself have all. said you want to ch see that changed. Is this not part of your strategy to do uh, that? My, no, not at all. I wanted things to change on Temple Mount. The place I do it, I promote my agendas on YouTube. I promote my agendas on my personal uh, website to show. And of course, this is what I was talking about. The the interviewer there, the Israeli interviewer, actually does question whether or not Yehuda Glick is trying to uh, promote the agenda there. Uh, and one thing I will say, I, I think that people should be allowed to pray anywhere, regardless of where it is, Temple Mount, anywhere. I mean, you should always have the freedom to pray. I, I do agree with that. And I do know, I will, I will admit, he's, Yehuda's right on one issue there. Normally, if you're there, you're wearing a kippah, you're wearing your tzitzit, uh, yes. They, they do want to get those people through there much quicker because they're concerned about a riot starting on the Temple Mount uh, because of the Muslims that are there. Uh, but you could be Jewish and come up there if, the, if you're not wearing religious garb. No, they're not going to rush you if you're, if you're not wearing religious garb. Which kind of reminds me, I remember flying out of uh, Israel one day, coming on a uh, plane going to Europe, when we lived in Europe there, going to Prague. And it's kind of interesting, on the plane, almost all the, all the people that got on the plane were wearing kippahs as far as the men. But when they got off, nobody hardly at all had a kippah on whatsoever. In Israel, they would definitely be religious, but as soon as they hit Europe, they took them off because they were always concerned about the persecution in Europe, what would happen if you were seen wearing a kippah there. Not that anything ever would happen, but there was always that fear that something could happen. Uh, so yeah, that is an issue on the Temple Mount, but, uh, but there again, there's so many things that were not taken into consideration when these things happen. Now, later that night though, Yehuda Glick is also tweeting out here that the police came with a search warrant to his house. He actually shows those photos. They took photos and video, excuse me, the police are taking the video there while they're doing the search of his home. Uh, that's what it says on this, well, you can see it in English on one side, on the other side it does say the police in Hebrew there. They are searching his home uh, and allegedly Yehuda Glick had taken some of the documents that were part of the investigation of, of things that are going on on the Temple Mount. And so Yehuda Glick actually posted those photos there on social media for people to see uh, what he deems to be harassment that is happening to him uh, on, on, there at his home later that night. Uh, uh, so, question is, we'll have to wait to see how this is all going to play out, what's going to be said. I did look to see if either of the congressmen had made any comments uh, before coming to air here. Thus far, they had not made any comments as of yet there. Uh, and then we're going to go back to this biblically in just a few moments here, but before I do, I want to bring up another issue that's also hitting the news today. Israel's top rabbi, I'm currently in discussions with the Messiah himself. And they quote the scripture, after that will I pour out my spirit on all flesh, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Joel's prophecy, chapter 3, verse 1. But you know what's really strange to me? Christians should know Joel 3, 1 is fulfilled in the book of Acts, according to the, according to the apostle Peter. 
But anyway, the guy goes on to write in here. Haredi rabbi privately uh, privy to secrets concerning the Messiah was sworn to silence for several decades by hidden righteous men, but they have now ordered him for the first time to publicize their messages about current events and the imminent imminent arrival of the Messiah. They tell him that it was literally a matter of life and death. Now, the article here is written by Eliyahu Berkowitz, Adam Eliyahu Berkowitz. Now, I just find this very interesting in this article because Eliyahu Berkowitz, he writes this here, that this prominent rabbi been in discussion with the Messiah now for a couple of decades, and now he's being told by these prominent men, these uh, righteous men, as they're called, that they he must publicize their messages about current events. Now, here's what's interesting, though. Who are these righteous men? Well, Mr. Berkowitz writes about it in the article here. The hidden righteous men are called Lamed Vavniks. The Lamed Vavniks, Sadikim, let me blow this up for you. You got to really see this. It's really fascinating to me if you ask me. He goes into right here about it, right? They're called the Lamed Vav Sadikim, are also called the Nitztarim, concealed ones, speaking of. <laughs> Psalm 83, everything that's contrary to the scripture they talk about here, right? Jewish tradition holds that their identities are unknown to each other and that if one of them comes to realization of their true purpose, they would never admit it. But wait a minute, Adam. You just wrote up here, though, that all these men are in cahoots talking to the Haredi rabbi uh, who is privy to the secrets concerning the coming of the Messiah and that they've been telling him that he's got to come out and publicize all this. But now you're saying that they, they don't even know who they are, that one wouldn't know the other one. And if he did, you know, he, he, he wouldn't admit it. And in fact, you're going to say the Lamed Vavniks do not themselves know that they are one of the 36. In fact, tradition has it should a person claim to be one of the 36, that is proof positive that they are not certainly not one. Well, if that be the case, then how in the world do they even know? You see how confusing things can get like that? It's just amazing to me. So we have all these things going on. Rabbi Yehuda Glick up there trying to get attention for the Temple Mount, prayer on the Temple Mount. We've got that. We've got this guy claiming that the Messiah has been in contact with him. And it actually goes on into this that the Gog of Magog war is about to happen. And that there, things are going to happen very rapidly. Seems like to me there's some... There's some politicians in the behind the scenes working with these rabbis to expedite problems and manufacture prophecy. If you remember, I showed you that over in the book of Daniel. The violent among your people, Daniel was told the violent among your people will try to establish the vision, but they will stumble. They're doing exactly that to this day. And then all this talk with Yehuda Glick and the Temple Mount, and, and, and there's so many people, so especially Christians, supporting the building of the Third Temple. And yet they, many of these people know that the Antichrist will be, wants to use that Third Temple. I mean, the scripture says, Satan says that he wants to be like God, sit in the temple of God being worshipped as if he were God. Now, I believe that that is a compound fulfillment. Not only would the Antichrist want to sit in a third temple, but he also wants to sit inside the human soul where the Holy Spirit was meant to dwell. And they're planning on doing that through their AI technology with their AI serpent, as some rabbinic scholars say, Holy Serpent Messiah. There's nothing holy about the serpent, is there? Not at all. But anyway, that's what's going on. Netanyahu boasts, though, uh, this is another article here that was put out, as I mentioned to you earlier in the broadcast there, by, um, uh, we'll get to Mr. Cole there, Netanyahu boasts that he destroyed free speech in America. And, and it's really true. I mean, Juan Cole is right in this. He says, Israeli caretaker Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has been indicted for corruption and facing an election soon, just boasted that his Ministry of Strategic Affairs has managed to undermine First Amendment protections for free speech in the United States by lobbying state legislators to pass laws forbidding the boycott of Israel. <laughs> He's right, isn't he? He's telling the truth. Watch what the Prime Minister says. 
It was also not for nothing that American administration has taken this step toward, uh, together with us. In recent years, we have promoted laws in most states which determine that strong action is to be taken against whoever tries to boycott Israel. That was stated by the Prime Minister on February 12, 2020. You know, you know, listen, I, it's interesting. Yehuda Glick is lobbying for the President of the United States to get involved on the Temple Mount to give the authority, take it over, maybe like the Golan Heights. We're going to annex this. We're going to annex the Jordan Valley. Now we're going to annex, we annex Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. And now we're going to annex the Temple Mount. And some Christians are probably saying right now, Steve, wait a minute, that belongs to the Jewish people. Whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did you forget what, what the Word of God says? Did you forget that Jesus in Matthew 23 indicted the Pharisees and Sadducees for failing to keep the Word of God? Do you remember what Zechariah the prophet was said, said here when he gave the vision there about Joshua the high priest and the angel of the Lord forewarned Joshua saying? He what? He forewarned Joshua saying. Okay? Okay? If you will walk in my ways, thus saith the Lord of hosts, if thou will walk in my ways, and if thou will keep my charge, and will also judge my house, and will also keep my courts, then will I give thee free access among these that stand by. Now, they did put, the, I just noticed as I was reading this, it doesn't actually say the word for one, forewarned, but it does say, they, wait a minute, I'm sorry, I apologize. They add, okay, the angel of the Lord to Joshua. So you can translate that as a warning. That, Thus saith the Lord, Thus saith the Lord of armies, If, see, If you will walk in my ways. Well, the problem is, Israel did for a little while, but not long. Because we find out, Matthew 23, Okay, Matthew 23, All through here, Oh, actually, this, I'm sorry, man, this is actually Matthew chapter 3. First, you see it from John. John should have really been the high priest. But he had to go to the wilderness because they had killed him. Bring forth, therefore, fruits meet for repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father, for I say to you that God is able these stones to raise up children to Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast, with, uh, cast into the fire. That's what John the Baptist said. And then Jesus, when we come to Matthew 23, he begins, the entire chapter is an indictment to the Pharisees and Sadducees. The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All right. Let me let me let me read something to you though. All right. Matthew 23. I'm going to take you to the Hebrew Matthew because it, it corrects the verbiage on this and what actually is said. Okay. So let's go to the Hebrew Matthew, chapter 23, verse 1. Verse 2 actually. Then uh, Jesus spoke to the people and the disciples, saying, Upon the seat of Moses, the Pharisees and the sages sit. All right. All, now, we have here in, in the Greek one, all therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do, but do not you after their works, for they say and do not. Now, to me, it should be plain English even in the Greek here. They sit in Moses' seat. In other words, they take Mo the authority of Moses. But Jesus tells you real quick, like, do not... Uh, but do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. In other words, they're hypocrites. In the Hebrew, Matthew says, Now all which they say to you, keep and do, but according to their ordinances and deeds, do not, because they say not and do not. Same thing. It's really no different. Jesus lets you know they don't have any authority is the point. 
For they bind heavy burdens and grievousness is to be borne and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. All right? Then he begins on it. When we get down to all right, verse 13, but woe unto you, Pharisees, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer you them that are entering to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make a long prayer, for uh, therefore you shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you can pass sea and land to make one proselyte. Okay? And when he is made, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Now the whole chapter is about all these things. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe and mint and eyes and cumin and have omitted the weighter matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought you to have done and not to leave the other undone. You blind guides which strain at a net and swallow a camel. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you make clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but within them you are full of extortion and excess. Now blind Pharisee cleanse first that which is within the cup and in the platter that the outside of them may also uh, be clean also. And it goes on and on and on. He says here, Woe unto you Pharisees, scribes and Pharisees, uh, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets, garnish the sepulchres of the righteous, and say if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would have not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore you be witnesses unto yourselves that you are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill you up the measure of your fathers. You serpents, you generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? Wherefore behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes. Some of them you shall kill and crucify. Some of them shall you scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city. That upon you may come all the righteous bloodshed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, uh, son of Barcaeus, whom you excuse me, slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. All right, you see that now? Jesus just indicted the Pharisees and Sadducees. Now he says, Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. All right, now, in Matthew 23, the Hebrew Matthew, there is one also thing that is missing that we don't have there. And that's in verse, I think it's 35 or 34. Verse 34. He says, at that time, Jesus said to the crowds of Jews, all right, then he went on to say, I will, I, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men, okay? But when he gets down here, after he's, he's indicted them, indicts them as murderers, Pharisees and Sadducees, calls them a reptilian race, a generation, that's literally, like it says in the Hebrew Matthew, seed of vipers. Why does he call them seed of vipers? They mingled the holy seed, the priest line did, over according to Ezra the prophet when they were in Babylon. All right? Then he says like this, O Jerusalem, now you pastors that are promoting the building of the third temple, that are selling trump coins, and you claim you love my people, Listen, I say to you, you who to glick, if you're listening to this, I do love you. I do care about you. I care about your soul. I challenge you. I challenge every Jewish person that is listening to this broadcast right now. You go and you sincerely, if you got to do it in secret, I don't care. Find a place and pray and sincerely before God. You can pray within your heart. You don't have to pray out loud. And you ask, was Jesus Christ truly the Son of Almighty God? Was He the righteous branch that Zechariah spoke of that we just read in here just a few moments ago? Because even Zechariah, when he speaks about this righteous branch that's going to come in verse 8, my servant the shoot. See? 
And he talks about that he would remove the iniquity of that land in one day. That was the death of Jesus Christ that removed the iniquity of the land in one day. And that day, saith the Lord of hosts, shall you call every man his neighbor under the vine and under the fig tree. Do you know that that, was, that verse right there was fulfilled when, watch what it says. All right. And that day, saith the Lord of hosts, shall you call every man his neighbor under the vine and under the fig tree. A portion of that is fulfilled when Philip called Nathaniel when he was praying under the fig tree and said, Come see who we found, the Mashiach, the Messiah. And when Nathaniel comes back around there, Yeshua, when he sees him coming up, and he said, Behold, an Israelite in whom there is no God. He said, Rabbi, when did you know me? He said, Before Philip called you when you were praying under the fig tree, I saw you. See, the servant, God's servant, Semach. Oh my gosh, how do you miss this? So I, I challenge you, Mr. Glick. You're wanting to be able to pray on the Temple Mount where there is, here's the remedy right here. You want to pray there, and when you find out what the truth of this is, you don't even need a physical temple because Jesus Christ is that temple. And when you believe upon him, when he and he'll reveal himself to you if you just ask him. Just pray sincerely. You ministers that claim that you Yehud is your friend and you won't approach it to him like this. With love, sincerity. You want to help my people? That's how you help my people. You tell, they're talking about, like you just talking about, he, he wants equality to be able to pray on the Temple Mount. All right, you want to be able to pray up there? Sure, any, you should be able to pray anywhere you want. I agree with that. But the Word of God says, enter into your closet and pray in secret and your heavenly Father that hears will hear. Wow. We forget about that, don't we? Jesus said this, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, Pharisees and Sadducees. All right? Orthodoxy today claims to be from the Pharisees. He just said, You killed the prophets and stonest them which I sent unto you. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathered her chickens under her wings? And you would not. Your forefathers, my forefathers would not. All right? I came the same way. All right? Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. That's your spiritual house and the temple. For I say unto you, you shall not see me henceforth till you shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. That temple, the second temple, was destroyed by the very prophecy delivered by Jesus Christ himself. He said that overlooking the Temple Mount. Then he went down to the temple, and after they were leaving the temple there, his disciples said, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, after he just condemned it and said, your house will be left unto you desolate until you say, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Then he says to them, see you not all these things. Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that it shall not be thrown down. Now he's speaking in plain language because I guess they didn't get it when he was over on the other side. How can you call for the building up of the third temple as Christians when your Lord spoke condemnation to that temple and many of you out there repenting for the ninth Matish Be'av based on because Yitzhak Shapira told you to go repent for it? Are you serious? That's kind of like when they took and they come across in Jericho and Joshua said you know, the guy didn't hear you. Whoever, build, whoever rebuilds the city, cursed be the man. Jesus tells you that the temple was destroyed because of their sins. He indicts them for murder. And when they didn't get the plain language over here in Matthew 23, your house is left desolate. 
unto you desolate, for I say unto you, you shall not see me henceforth, till you shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. All right, then he has to come over here and tell you not, there's not going to be one stone left upon another. I don't care if the Roman general Titus is the one that destroyed the temple or not. Jesus prophesied it, and it was a result of the sins of Israel that brought this temple to that destruction. And he said on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us, when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of thy coming in the end of the world? Me and my wife are going to go into this much deeper in a very near future here for you. Right? But just remember this one right here in verse 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. Who's the you? That was those disciples. All right? He told them to flee to the mountains when they saw these things coming. That was their generation, not our generation. That was their generation. And it was a tribulation like they'd never seen before in all their lives. Now, can things be cyclical? We could have cyclical events. But they ain't nothing like what happened back then. Nothing. I'll go into this later for you. Anyway, listen. To my Jewish friends, that are listening. I know there's thousands of Jews that listen to this broadcast. Can I just humbly remind you, Jesus gave a decree. He indicted the Pharisees and Sadducees of 2,000 years ago. This is why the second temple was destroyed. He prophesied of its destruction. It was all because of our forefathers' sin. I challenge you to sincerely. They talk about repenting for what happened on Tishbab. I challenge you as my Jewish kindred that you need to repent. We have to repent for what our forefathers did. The blood of all the prophets were upon them. The ministers and the Christians that, are, that, are, that have befriended you, Mr. Glick and others, they don't have the courage to say to you that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. They don't have the courage to you to ask you, sincerely, go and pray and ask whether or not it be true. I believe if you would sincerely go and you would with all your heart I say it to you as well, my, my friend Chris. I say it to you. Sincerely ask if Jesus Christ was indeed the Mashiach of 2,000 years ago. He said right here, I will, you will not see me henceforth until you say, Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. The Hebrew Matthew actually words it a little differently. And I think it's very interesting. And I want to read to you what the Hebrew Matthew said in that last statement as well. Because it's worth, noteworthy to, to read this. Truly I say to you, you will not see me henceforth until you will say, Blessed is our Savior. That's admitting that He was the Messiah. I encourage you to pray. Christian brothers and sisters, you want to know the truth? You'll get the truth here. I won't play church with you. This is too late. You want to help my people? Try to lead them to Christ. Pray for them. Anything like that, do. But don't support the building of the third temple. Don't do it. Yehuda Glick wants the right to be able to pray on the temple mount. Okay, it's no different than if he were to pray at his house. All right, he's got a right to that. That's his battle, though. I can't stand for the building of a third temple, though. Because you see what Jesus did. He indicted my people for the crimes against the prophets. Okay? I love you. And I will be praying for my Jewish friends tonight. I'm going to specifically pray that God will deal with your hearts. Because I do care about you and I do love you. You are my kindred. And we share that in common. Those of you that 
many of you out there, you supporting these things that are going on, things like that. Look, you want to support something? Why don't you stand with somebody that's willing to tell you the truth? We're willing to tell you the truth. I'm not here to sugarcoat it, though. We'll tell you the truth. You want to support the work we do? IsraeliNewsLive.org. Our website will appear as always here at the end of the broadcast. If you're having trouble giving there, I'll put in the link for Patreon. You can give there on Patreon as well. You can just do a one-time gift, just like you do on our website. Still comes to us same way, no different. Or you can do it by mail. Either way, we appreciate you. We need your support. There's not many people that stand for truth. I will tell you that. If I want to spout off the Zionistic views and, 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 and worship the state of Israel, I, I'd probably be a millionaire at this point because we care about our people that are there, that are Jewish, and we're willing to tell them the truth. That's why we're just a small ministry. And we care about our Christian friends, that they're not deceived. That's another, that's another strike against us. Jesus said, if they hated me, they'll hate you too. Think about who are the ones that are being beloved. Notice how Jesus said, if they hated me, they will hate you too. Did you ever, I just, that just come to me just now, the revelation of that. The Pharisees and Sadducees hated Jesus with a passion. Do you see the Pharisees of Israel? Now you know who they are. They've already told you that they're Pharisees. They're the descendants of the Pharisees. That doesn't make them bad people now. Please don't misunderstand me. There was a Paul that was a Pharisee. There was a Nicodemus that was a Pharisee. But they believed Jesus. Nicodemus had to do it in secret. But there were still those Pharisees that never would come out of that. They were too, too dyed in the wool of those, that serpent genealogy. But you see those ones that are Pharisees today... You see the ministries they love because they go arm in arm. You pastor friends, I, I love you guys and I'm begging you to repent. When you're locked arm in arm, not preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, Jesus was trying to save them from that fire. But instead, you embrace and go right with them. Jesus said, if they hated me, they'll hate you. How in the world then can you have such that kind of relationship? It's because you're not doing something right. You're not standing for the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the evidence. Paul, or excuse me, Jesus said, by their fruit, you shall know them. Friend, change the fruit of the tree and stand for the gospel. You, you might get rejected, but you know what? You might end up winning somebody like you who had a glick to Christ. And he might have a little bit more appreciation for you because you stand for the truth. Especially on the day of judgment when you've got to stand before Christ and give account then. Imagine, you know, for, for an Orthodox rabbi that would reject Christ all the way to the end, will have a far better time on the day of judgment than a minister that knew Jesus Christ and turned his back on Christ instead and failed to tell his Jewish friend the truth. God bless you. Thank you for your support of this ministry.